Good morning. It's Monday and we are live on Facebook. Thanks for joining me. We're discussing happiness and the recipe and formula for happiness. Remember, there are five things that can contribute to your happiness if you participate in doing them for three weeks in a row. We're highlighting one per week. Last week was writing down three things that you're grateful for. What are you grateful for today? Today, the sun is trying to shine. Yesterday was an amazing day. And this morning brings me the subject for today's message about unhappiness having a tipping point. Now, what I mean by that is happiness is something that you have to look for. Happiness is something that you have to actively participate in. As I mentioned, my father is an amazing example of how he chose happiness in nearly every situation. Rarely was that man unhappy. And this morning, while getting ready, my children demonstrated how unhappiness can overtake our lives. They were messing around, playing together, and just the way that they are, back and forth, uh, it's rather like fencing. Uh, it's <laughs> attack, parry, repost, 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 repost. And between the two of them, they keep going at each other. And there's a tipping point to that. And the tipping point to the back and forth, when it's negative jabs and uh, negative comments, is that at one point someone is angered. Someone gets so frustrated that they are beyond uh, positive, beyond sanity, beyond kindness. And at that moment, tempers flare. So there is a tipping point for many things. And there's a tipping point that brings in your unhappiness. So the world has uh, five biggest stressors that they determine as the tipping point for stress levels and, of course, the accompanying unhappiness. Everybody knows what they are. Get a job, get married, uh, buy a house or move, uh, have a baby, and a death in the family. So when you're hit with those five big things, your stress levels tend to increase dramatically and there's a tipping point. So when thinking about your happiness and your unhappiness, what is the tipping point where you are no longer able to choose happiness? And it can move as you search for happiness, as you uh, integrate those aspects of uh, uh, behaviors that promote happiness and as you know last week was being grateful and our exercise of writing down three things you're grateful for there is a point in time at which you may find so many things build up that you are then unhappy so how do you change that how do you maintain a happiness in the face of distress, in the face of trouble, in the face of mounting situations that directly um, contribute to your sense of unhappiness. And of course, no one's expecting you to be happy all the time. No one expected my father to be happy as often as he was. I'm not sure how he did it, but it was miraculous. And it was a great example for me in choosing happiness despite the situations, despite the uh, life's troubles that were happening. So this week, take a look at what it is that you can embrace about happiness and then just note the kinds of things that begin to erode that happiness and what do you do about it? What is the tipping point that then creates unhappiness in your life? And if you pay close enough attention to what those things are, you can take an active role in preventing it from eroding your happiness and you can bring happiness right back into your life despite what's happening around you. So remember, living life is a choice and living life happy is a choice and you can choose to see the happiness and 
when you look for happiness, your mind actively deletes the things that can contribute to your unhappiness. So I encourage you, until I see you again on Wednesday, think head wise, feel heart wise, and move body wise, and look at your happiness. I'm excited to hear what you have to say about it.